Well, General Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association, Dr. Jackson, Justice Yang Singh, made the call for the review of the country's approach to fighting the pandemic on Joy FM's Super Morning Show. I think that we should call a state a state. As a country, gradually, we are going to sleep as far as COVID-19 is concerned. The situation is that, one, enforcement is not happening at any levels whatsoever. Mm. By enforcement, I mean all the protocols that we have put in place. Let's be truthful to ourselves. Look at how, for example, the UK police are out there enforcing all the measures that have been put in place. And look at what is happening at our end. The president speaks to us. He's been so great. He tells us that look, certain activities are still banned. And look at what happened throughout the festivities. And even during the political season. Has anybody been brought to book for any particular action? And do we see any enforcement whatsoever happening along the line? Some of our problems are self-inflicted. Mm. And if we don't take time, it is going to hurt us and hurt us so much. I can tell you that over the Christmas period till now, I have had calls from over 20 different families who have had COVID one way or the other. Mm. And some of them, you talk to them, the system has not even reached out to them to see whether one they are doing well or what is happening to them in the first place. Okay. And these are people, per the structure we are running, are supposed to be known to the system. They are doctors or healthcare professionals who will be mapped to these patients to oversee their care, even where they are receiving care at home, i.e. outside the care centers or the hospitals. And all these things are hap not happening. We, sometimes some of the reports when we hear them, it, it's a bit difficult for us to really say that this is the truth. But you can't also dispute it. People will tell you that, look, I know this person who has tested positive, but I saw him at a pub. Mm. We, need, we really need to take a critical look at what is happening to us. I mm. think that at this point, we need to have a complete review of all the processes that we have put in place. Well, Dr. Justice Yangsin joins us on phone right now. Thank you very much, Dr. Yangsin, for making time. One of the complaints that's coming up is that most people who want to know their status have to pay to get tested at private labs, as the public health facilities are not returning results early enough. Is the testing regime one of the things you'd want to see change? Uh, definitely so, Israel. You see, we, 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 we have a situation where it looks as if the ability to pay component, which is being run by these private health facilities, although their efforts are to complement what the nation is doing, seems to be rather the pay that is being publicized a lot more. So when it comes to access by way of ability to pay, then the ordinary man who does not have enough will say that, look, I can't spend too much to go and do the test. Even though the man may have symptoms that potentially could be covered, he will stay away. The system is also not letting people do where they can go and test for free. So, so, so we need to look at the testing regime and then come out with new guidelines publicize them properly for the people of Ghana to know, not just in Accra, but across the country. Then they know where they can assess certain things as and when they have problems. Dr. So, Yang Singh, now if someone comes to your facility and says they have COVID or pre they're presenting with their COVID symptoms, what happens to such a person? Well, the, the, key, the first thing is this. They might not even know that it's COVID to start off with. So they come in, they give their complaints and what have you. You as a doctor, you have a certain regime that you go through. So you take your history, you may have to examine and all that. But as you go through the processes, you will come up with what we call your differential diagnosis or diagnosis, depending on what is at stake. At some point, you make a decision that, look, this is a potential COVID case, for which reason, for example, we need to screen yes. the patient. So then you trigger the COVID 
you know, protocol that we have in the health facilities. And that will include at least keeping this patient out of the reach of all other patients such that the patient does not infect all others. The health professionals will know what to do, i.e. including uh, getting the people who are to do the testing to come in. So basically, we will hold this patient in some portion of the facility and then we will get the testing and all done. But the difficulty, as you said earlier, is sometimes it takes so long for you to get your test result. And without that confirmation, it also becomes difficult for you to even say that you want to send this patient to a COVID treatment center. Because not all are wards that are designated for the treatment of COVID at this point. So if this patient unfortunately ends up, say, on a ward and is not also picked up early, by the time they come, the results come in, you could have a situation where all other patients or even the health professionals themselves would have been exposed and potentially some would have been infected. All right. So what so, happens to such a patient? Well, unfortunately, this is the situation. Truth is this. There have been situations where people have actually gone back home without a system or the health facility system. Really? Knowing. Sometimes, yes, we've been able to keep them in our holding areas for days. And that is the frustration that sometimes we go through as doctors because, you know, when you know somebody is positive, in terms of your preparation, i.e. the PPEs and all the bills that you were to go see that patient, it, 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 it's, it's like you know what is at stake. But where you, you, you are now waiting for results, and mind you, some of these patients, the way they present may also be similar to other common diseases that we already know. Some patients may also have underlying problems that you still will have to manage whilst waiting for the results. And where you have situations where our COVID treatment centers and all the beds are also full, sometimes it, 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 it's a hassle. So and like I said, not all facilities have the ability to keep a lot of patients on their ward or designated ward for care. So, Dr. So Yansing, are you, come up are you saying, Dr. Yansing, Yes. Are you saying that as we have it now, some of the patients that come to you presenting with COVID symptoms are turned away or no, you can't the accommodate them? No, will not turn them away. But the frustration that sometimes comes along with waiting for the COVID team to come and all that, we've had situations where some patients, you, you couldn't really account for them because, you see, when you are overwhelmed, Mind you, the health professionals themselves, to start off with, most health facilities are understaffed. There are other competing needs in terms of care that we have to deliver to all the patients. So if, let's say, you have, say, two or three or four people and your holding area cannot take that much, then those who have to wait within some confined, relative, I mean, in quote, confined in quote, area, Pending the arrival of these professionals who are going to take the samples and what have you. In the process, we've had situations where some of them, you couldn't find them as at the time the professionals were in to take these samples. And you know, it's not every facility that also have staff really available to do all the COVID protocols. So depending on the level of the facility, sometimes you could have challenges. And these are the frustrations and the difficulties that sometimes the health professionals, the doctors go through. When, let's say, a patient is on the ward being cared for for some other condition, the patient may not have presented from the outset with symptoms or typical COVID symptoms. They may have come in with their, in quote, chronic problems, let's say diabetes, hypertension, what have you. But whilst on the ward, after a day two or three, you as a doctor, you pick certain things and you're like, no, this could also be COVID-related. Yeah. Let's go and screen or test this patient. In the process, if the test results delay, and in the past there have been times that it's taken weeks to come, of course, we have improved, sometimes three days, four days, two days. But as and when the delays happen, you are already saddled with this patient on a regular ward not a COVID-designated ward, because you need to get the confirmed result before you can move the patient 
to stay a COVID treatment center. Right. Meanwhile, there are other patients who are also on the ward. Yes. So when these things happen, then there, 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 there's a bit of uh, uncertainty around everybody. Because Do Dr. Yangtzee. They have been exposed already. Dr. Yangtzee, what? the test results are not coming in the way you want them to come in. Yeah. Dr. Yangtzee, what's the one thing you'd want to see immediately changed about this approach? Look, we, 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 we need to look at this current situation we find ourselves in. Clearly, there are quite a number of patients out there who are not getting the needed care because the system itself hasn't picked them. Either as a result of the testing centers, especially the private ones, who are yet to actually upload these patients onto the main national database for the mapping to be done. And by the mapping, what I mean is that even if you are getting care at home, some designated health professionals are supposed to be checking on you. Either they come there or they communicate with you on phone, right. look at certain parameters and what have you. And clearly this is not happening. When it comes to the testing regime, we need to have clear guidelines for people to know where they can access certain things for free All right. and what to do when they have symptoms. Because in the past, the, the protocol was you call and we'll get to you. But clearly that has changed. All people right. need to understand where people are going to pay, not because they are going to travel, but maybe they feel that they have symptoms. You know, when people are paying for their travels and what have you, it, it is more like a private activity. And for that one, I don't have any difficulties with them. But when the ordinary man on the street, per all the education we've done, thinks that, look, what I'm experiencing could be COVID. Or maybe he thinks that, look, where I am, I need to know my status. How do they assess the, the testing sites that we have? So do that's... they always have to pay? And yeah. if they are paying, how much? All Is right. it going to be some subsidized rate? or they are going to pay just like somebody who is going on his own private, you know, frolic elsewhere, who has to go through a certain testing regime just to satisfy the need of, say, the airlines or the countries that they are going to visit. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Justice Sian Singh. As the General Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association. You're watching Joy News Prime. <laughs>